Hello again, I am Blunty, and hey, a little spur of the moment video for you this morning because I woke up this morning and I saw that a new thing from Valve had plopped itself into the Steam store. Specifically, and interestingly, a Steam VR performance test benchmark program thingamadoodler. And of course, with the two major boys, the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, about to hit the market real soon now. Do either of those have a date associated with them yet? I haven't checked. It must be soon, though. They're starting to ramp up anyway. But it's time to check out your system to make sure you can have a nice VR experience and that's what this tool is supposed to be doing. Now it's not really super ideal actually because it doesn't do things like account for the CPU usage a VR system uses for positional tracking and all that kind of stuff and it doesn't check your USB capabilities for the actual hardware to communicate with your system with but the good thing is you don't actually need any VR equipment at all to run it. In fact it's been designed specifically to help people figure out how well their existing system will cope with VR as far as graphics performance frame rates and fidelity go. So they can make a bit more more of an educated decision about whether or not they want to buy a VR headset and if they need to upgrade their graphics card and stuff. Now, of course, it's not the final word on how your personal VR experience may be. There are a lot of factors at play here, like there are with doing anything on a PC gaming-wise, but it is at least a nice little standardized benchmark useful for evaluating your system and making apples for apples comparisons with other people's systems, which, yes, can sometimes dissolve into a bit of a pissing match on forums and stuff, but it is also kind of interesting. So, as a man who has access to a GTX 950, a GTX 960, and yes, regular viewers, that one is a new arrival for testing, more on that in a later video. I've also got a GTX 970 and a GTX 980 Ti and I've even got two different systems ready to go both a properly powerful custom-built gaming PC and a deliberately built low-end i3 based gaming PC and I figured this morning it'd be interesting to see how some configurations tested on these machines and although all of these cards can carry an even faster overclock than they come out of the box with for the sake of a level playing field here I'll be running them at out-of-the-box specs. So let's get to it. We'll go top down, actually. First up is my main rig and its usual inhabitant, a Gigabyte Extreme Edition GTX 980 Ti. I do have a review of that if you haven't seen it. Predictably enough, the big boy 980 Ti nearly maxes out the scale here, scoring 11 on the fidelity. It makes me wonder what would happen if I had two of them to SLI. Not that two of these cards will fit in my current system, but anyway, I wonder if the chart would adjust itself to an all-new scaling system or just max out and give up, because I have to imagine that two of these cards would do more than push me over a little bit at the edge of the scale there. Anyway, moving on to the GTX 970 now, my Gigabyte G1 Gaming OC edition specifically. The GTX 970 is the recommended card for both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift headsets, so I suspect Nvidia will be selling a few more of these in the coming months as people upgrade to a more pleasant VR experience level if they're dealing with a card in the system that's a couple of years old or so. And this is of course reflected in the test, buried deep into the first third of the green bar with a fidelity score of 6.9. Everything looks hunky-dory here. So moving on, GTX 960, and I'm sorry, but I'm not telling you which card specifically because I haven't made the reveal of this card yet in its own video, so I'll keep it a secret for now. <laughs> but suffice to say, it is an OC edition card, of course, so it comes out of the box with a moderate overclock. But it is here where you're starting to worry about the VR experience. Again, not shocking considering we already know the 970 is the card both products are suggesting you have for the best experience, but it does look like you can get away with an acceptable VR experience on the GTX 960. Dead center of the yellow capable bar, and a suggestion that low fidelity VR will be okay. We didn't drop any frames below 90 FPS and we copped a low fidelity score of 2.9. So let's whack in the baby brother of the 900 line, the GTX 950, a Gigabyte OC edition card. It only slips a little behind the 960 under this test, dropping a couple of decimals down to 2.5 fidelity score and sliding left along the bar just south of the middle mark, the 960 left. And again, the suggestion is that a low fidelity VR experience will be okay here. And again, we got away without dropping any frames below the 90 FPS required to help keep things like VR motion sickness at bay. So that's pretty good, actually. So the story is so far, any current model 900 series card from NVIDIA will be okay for VR, but if you want good VR instead of okay VR, then of course a 970 is your best bang for buck option. So now let's pop on over to the little rig which we recently rebuilt, and I still haven't settled on a name for it by the way, <laughs> but there are some fantastic suggestions in the comment section, so if you haven't seen that vid, pop on over and add your two cents and whatnot. Anyway, but let's find out if the i3 bottlenecks us with the same GTX 950 we just tested in the big rig. And the answer is yes. 
Atlas. Although we didn't trip any CPU bound frames and we did manage to maintain at or above 90 FPS, here under the weaker CPU a fidelity score of just 1.5 plops in. Although the benchmark still thinks it'll be okay for low fidelity VR. So hmm. I guess once more my little Skylake i3 monster proves itself as punching above its weight class. I'd honestly expected a red line mark for this system's VR capability. I deliberately built the system to be kind of the low end. But as it turns out, if you want to have a bit of a play with VR, you don't need a super maxi system just to get onto the playing field. That's good news. All right, so your turn now. The benchmark is, of course, free. Suck it down from the Steam store. I'll whack a link in my down below area for you to make things easy and pop back in and let me know what kind of marks you score on your system and what GPU and CPU combo punch you're churning away with. And while you're waiting for the download, why not fiddle with my down below area and, and do the thing with the buttons and stuff? <laughs> Because on first blush, the whole VR thing on PC seems a bit intimidating. I mean, you have to run sort of two different screens at 90 FPS, and it sounds like it's just a big strain on your system, and everyone's going, oh, you have to upgrade your system, you have to have a powerful system for VR, but it looks like, you know, like we said, just to get on the playing field, you can get away with a pretty low-end system. So let me know what your scores are, and let's find out exactly how interesting this whole playground is. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.